Are you disappointed at the current political atmosphere that we're living in today? Are you disappointed in your religious leaders and feel that prayer doesn't work? Well, be encouraged. I have some answers. Today we're talking about part three of the kingdom of God versus the government of mankind. Well, greetings and welcome to another Kingdom of God broadcast. I'm your host, Apostle Reginald Washington. Call your friends, text your neighbor, tweet somebody, inbox somebody, and let them know that the Kingdom of God broadcast is on the air. so glad that you decided to join me today. God bless you. Get your notepad and pencil. We have some exciting information to share with you. I want to welcome you all. Those who are tuning in live on Facebook and those who are catching the recording this morning, God bless you. God bless you real good. Now, before we get into our subject matter for today, we want to pray. We want to pray. <laughs> I love the Lord today, my God. If it were not for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Where would you be if it wasn't for the Lord? He saw you through another week. We're going to rejoice. We're going to enter in because nothing, nothing, nothing that happens to us catches God by surprise. He knew our, our downsets. He knew our uprisings. He knew. And he said, I am Alpha. I am Omega. I am beginning. I am the end. I started you at your end and allowed you to be born at your beginning. So in other words, he's already equipped you for greatness. He has equipped you for greatness. If you did not have purpose, you would have not been born. So don't let anybody tell you, you are not valuable. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today that you are God all by yourself. You allowed us to be here one more time. You gave us the grace and the mercy to survive another week. Father, we thank you today that our bodies are healed, that we've overcome all challenges, and all problems. Father, that nothing is broken, nothing is lost. All things are restored, God. We thank you today that the enemy is defeated. Our bodies are healed. Our loved ones are saved. Relationships are restored. God, we thank you right now that the angels are dispatched to help your children. And we bless you, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I want to tell, uh, give a, a call out to Pastor Jackson from Kingdom Life and Hemet. God bless you, man of God. Pastor Antoinette and her husband from Texas and Shane from Planeas. Uh, African Market in Lancaster, we thank God for you. Yes, we do. And I want you to know that Kingdom of God broadcast is sponsored in part by Kingdom of God, a towing vehicle donation. And yes, you can log on to KMI.org, KMI.org to donate a vehicle. We will be there to pick it up. If you're in California, just log on to KMI.org vehicle donation, and I want to thank Kathy Cash for donating her vehicle two weeks ago. We thank God that we're using that donation for the ministry. Yes, and if you don't have a car and you want to support this ministry, by all means, don't let the enemy tell you nothing different. Go ahead and click to donate, and you're helping this broadcast go around the 
world. And we thank God for it. So, the question of the day, which last week was from Luke chapter 24, verse 7. Who did Jesus say that the Son of Man would be delivered into the hands of? And the answer was sinners. And we thank God for Pastor Antoinette from Texas from getting it right and winning the $25 gift card to Walmart. And she says for me to donate it to somebody so someone is going to get blessed. Amen. So stay tuned for the last five minutes of this broadcast so that you will have uh, the next question of the day. And you will also have the opportunity to win a $25 gift card. So now we are in part three, part three of the kingdom of God versus the government of men. And this has been blessing you. Log on to cogme.org and go ahead and click the testimonial and let me know that you're listening and that this is blessing you. We're going through the 14 principles of the uh, kingdom of God versus the government of mankind. And uh, we are in part three, and I want to touch on, we, last week we were talking about the different types of governments, feudalism, uh, dictator, communism, socialism, and we was dealing with democracies, the pros and the cons of them. But I want to emphasize before we go forward that in a democracy, which most of us are in, it is the majority rules. It's the majority rule. That's why there's so much political fighting in Congress because the majority sets the rules and sets the the rules of the game. Wouldn't it be confusing? And I just had a thought. Wouldn't it be confusing? And how confusing would it be if two, say, two football teams, we're in football season, got together, all right? And then they counted the fans for both teams. You understand? So everyone's in the stadium and they do a head count of the fans of both teams, and then they begin the game. So whenever there is a call, a foul, or uh, some type of penalty, the uh, the referees ask the crowd to vote. What do you think the outcome of that game would be? The crowd that has the largest number of people would win every time. Whether or not it's a true foul or a true offsides or it's a fake touchdown or whatever it is, the majority will rule. Well, in a democracy, we have it set up where majority rules. Now, that's okay if the majority has the mind of Christ. If the majority does not have the mind of Christ, I want you to understand how dangerous this is then wickedness will be the law of the land and godliness will be a crime. You understand what I'm saying? See, California has this thing. It's called a no-kill state. That sounds really good. Thou should not kill. Well, what they're talking about are the poor animals that go into the shelters. They don't want to put them down, the cute little kitties and the little doggies, you know. They don't want to kill them. I understand that. That's fine. But they're passing laws and move, have a, a great movement. If you understand what I'm saying, Pastor Jackson, uh, that we don't want to kill the animals. And we're, we're proud of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there is, where is that same concern about the baby in the womb? See, the majority says we're not going to kill animals. As a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, um, they had an adoption for uh, special needs animals. Now, I was, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, oh, I'm a veteran. I have a, uh, you know, replaced knee and this, that, and the other. Oh, that's so nice. They're giving animals to people who have special needs. And that's not what they were doing. The animal had special needs. So if the cat was blind or if the dog had three legs, they were sending these animals out for adoption so they don't have to euthanize them. And they were paying all the fees so that you can adopt these animals for free. At the same time, the majority says it's okay to use birth control, abortion as birth control. It's okay that a woman can be pregnant and because it's inconvenient for her to have a baby, kill it. 
Because the majority says it's legal. That is where democracy has a serious problem. Because when the society says there is no God, and we pass laws saying God is illegal, then we embark on a dangerous, dangerous path. However, democracy is the best we have. Our only alternative is for us to turn back to the Creator's original kingdom concept, and that was a kingdom or a society ruled by a righteous king. And if you don't read your Bible, if you're not praying, and if you're getting caught up in the political stuff of the, you know, the news and, you know, all these things that are going on and how the, the scandals in the church, you will believe that there is no hope, but there is hope. So there are worldwide problems, not just to California or the United States or the Western Hemisphere. We have hemisphere. We have worldwide, worldwide problems. And those are hunger. We have a hunger problem. People are dying of starvation around the world. There are many children and homeless people in the United States who don't have enough food to eat. We have health problems. Oh, we can go on about the spread of disease and cancer. My, my brother recently had surgery on his uh, liver cancer and his wife had lung cancer. There's the, the spread of disease and, and all of us know somebody that, got, that has some type of disease. There's wars and there's terrorism, racial hatred and violence, segregation and nuclear fears, and no confidence in the economy. And people are, are don't know what to do. Should they hide their food? Should they put their money under their mattress? And they are looking for answers. And the problems that they're facing are worldwide. So mankind's attempt... He's always attempted to live in peace with himself and with his neighbor. From, from, from the beginning of Cain and Abel, there's been a struggle for mankind to get along with each other. Since the fall of Adam in uh, Genesis chapter 3. So it matters not what part of the world you live. It doesn't matter where you go. These problems are inescapable. And man has always been involved in an attempt to bring social order and some kind of government structure to society. He's from, from the time of the caveman. If you go to the archaeologist and, they, and they're looking on the walls of ancient cavemen, you see some type of social order and structure. If you're looking in the pyramids and the hieroglyphics of the ancient Egyptians, you see signs of social order and structure. This came from God. Even after Noah got off the ark after the flood and his descendants, his sons, went to repopulate the earth, they began to set up some type of structure, some type of order. And on the lowest common denominator, we see that to be true. Even in our homes, we have order in our homes. Uh, the absence of order is chaos. Even in the animal kingdom, if you look at a pack of rats, they're organized. If you look at the ants, they're organized. If you look at bees, they're organized. Lions in the jungle, there's organization and a hierarchy of who's in charge and who's going to follow. And there's always a struggle to remove the person that's in charge. Do you want to know why that is? Write this down. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image, right? In our likeness. Who is God? God is king. He's the king of kings. That's why we call ourselves kings and ambassadors. He's the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. So God created you and I like him. We were created 
to take charge and to organize our environment. So God said, let them have dominion. Write that down and circle it seven times. Dominion means kingdom. So if in, if in the design of man, God built in him to control his environment, set and order his affairs. So God created man and God placed man, read Genesis, it'll bless you, in the garden to dress it and to keep it. So I want you to understand that God doesn't like bush. God wants a garden. What's the difference between a bush and a garden? They both have plants. But you can walk into a bush and you can see it overgrown, overgrown and just all in disarray. But you walk into a garden, there is evidence that the natural things have been touched by a human. You understand what I'm saying? So God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, uh, the creeping things, the animals, everything. But when man turned his back on God, he uh, rejected God's government and system of doing things. Now, man still has the desire to be in charge and to dominate. But now, without the Spirit of God moving in the conscience and the mind of man, man begins to hoard things to himself. He begins to enslave other people. God gave you dominion, okay? That's, that's a government order over things, not people. See, I don't have, I have dominion over my situation. I have dominion over my life. I do not have dominion over my wife. I don't control her. You don't control other people. And why is there hunger? Why is there a lack of resources? There isn't a lack of resources. It's a lack of the willingness to distribute what one has. So, the, the, the ability or the mindset to control came from God. The need for government order was manufactured into all men, and it is a divine mandate created by God himself. It is inerrant in the very fabric of human nature. I was at uh, AMPM. And uh, sometimes when I go to the gas station, I don't know if anybody ever witnessed this, but it's like when I get out of my car, I'm bombarded by people asking for money. It's like I got to pay a tax just to get into the door. So I was observing one particular couple who was there all the time, like that's their nine to five. And a third person came up to ask me for money after this couple asked me for money. But the man that was with the woman got upset at the other homeless guy for asking me for money, and he threatened him and ran him off the property. You see, even in the ranks of the homeless, they're trying to take dominion. It's in you. But unless we get back to God, it will not be done properly. So for the need of human order and human government is manufactured into all men. So write these points down. Number one, man was created to be a ruler and a governor, okay? So if you, if you have a child and that child just don't want to obey you, don't beat him down all the time. Find a way to constructively train that child because that child just may be the next president. And if you kill him, then we're going to be, uh, we're going to miss a great leader, all right? But number one, like I said, Man was created to be the ruler and a governor. Number two, it is man's nature to control his personal life and his social life. It's, it's, in, it's in his nature. We want people who have control of themselves. And it is natural to have control. When you see somebody downtown and they're saying stuff, doing stuff, harassing people, you say that person is out of control. When you go into Winco and you go to the bulk foods and you've got them kids with their hands 
not just them kids, but them adults that's stealing the bulk food, chewing on them raisins, getting a bag of raisins and eating a handful before they get to the counter so they can pay less. Uh-huh. That's called stealing. They're out of control. It is man's nature to be in control. And when you see that, you say that person is what? Out of control. Number three, government is necessary and the desired and is essential for social structure. We don't want to overthrow the government because if you overthrow the government, then wickedness will truly, truly reign. Now, in, in America, we have a great movie theater system. And I think this thing was called, um, I, I, I can't remember the name of the, the movie where you can do what you wanted to do for 24 hours, murder somebody, rape somebody. It doesn't matter. Uh, purge. That's what it is. Total lawlessness. Though we turn on the TV and one political side is complaining and the other political side is complaining. Everybody's complaining but everybody knows we need government, all right? So government is necessary and desired and essential for social structure, number one, two, three, four. Number four, from ancient times till now, we see in history man's needs for government. And we explain that from the caveman to the, to the Dead Sea Scrolls, we see the need for government. Mankind, the next one is, I think I'm on number six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm on number six. What mankind has an eternal desire to efficiently govern. We just don't want to govern. We want to be efficient at it. All right, so let's prove my, what I'm saying. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. I'm going to read it in your hearing. Listen to the word of God. And God said, let us... Make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Nothing was left out, but it doesn't say people. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, do what? Subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And I have to say, except mankind. You do not have the right to enslave anybody. All right, so we, we're, we're seeing God's original intent for man. God gave man government order instruction, heavenly government. Do you understand? God did not say and let them have leadership, church, religious position. Let that soak in. He God didn't say, and let them be Baptist, and let them be Pentecostal, let them be Seventh-day Adventist. Let, I'm not doubting that. You understand? I'm trying to give you the mind of God in the beginning from the book that we say we love, from the scriptures that we say that we believe in above all things. God said in the beginning, he established his government and he said, let them have dominion, rule, and subdue the earth. All right. All right. Listen to this. Write this down. Man's drive to control is a result of a formal need for structure. Man has need for some type of social order to govern his relationships and to manage others and himself. So here's the point. Government prototype begins in the smallest level, which is the family structure. If you destroy the family, you destroy the nation. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you destroy the basic foundation of society. God gave Adam dominion over the earth, number one. 
He gave him assignment to keep the earth. He gave him all of the rules. And then he gave him a woman. That is the, the foundation of God's purpose, his family. And we today are so concerned about the whales in the ocean. Not that we don't need to be concerned because God told Adam to keep the garden and dress it. So in other words, manage the resources. But we have moved our emphasis to the from the family structure, meaning man and woman and children, husband and wife married in that order, then children. And we place more emphasis on our cats and dogs and birds and the tunas that's caught in nets and the wild turtles and the not saying again that we don't supposed to be concerned about it, but we're not supposed to elevate the human life above a whale or uh, some exotic bird or worm or microbe or something. We are all created in the image of God. What if your mama had aborted you? What would you have missed out on? What if, what if, what if Mary succumbed to the social pressure and aborted Jesus? Imagine that. No, don't imagine that. Thank God for order. So where am I? God, uh, the government prototype begins with the smallest level, the family. If you destroy the family, you destroy the nation, number two. Okay? This is underneath the column, man's drive to control is a result of formal need of structure. Mankind has a need for some type of social relationship. So number two, national expression and constitutional order. A nation express himself. Because it's organized and the people prosper. Why do you suppose hundreds of people are marching from South America to crash and bombard the borders of America illegally? I'm sorry if you feel I'm being too political. And that's our problem. We don't understand that Jesus is not a president. He is not a prime minister. He described himself as king and lord. So yes, I must talk politics in the kingdom realm so that we can bring justice and peace for all men, black, white, yellow, and brown on this earth. That's correct. Jesus said, I come to bring you what you lost. And that was a kingdom. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right, that's another lesson, but that's what he said. Okay, well, let's see. National need for government. Every nation, number three, has a need for government. And guess what? I have to stop right there, and I surely hope that you come in and stay tuned for part four of the kingdom of God versus the government of man. And I hope you have all these series. And if you don't, you can write me at KMI. LancasterCA.gmail.com, and I can catch you up. So the question for today is found in Mark 16 and 15. Jesus said, go ye unto all the world and do what? Jesus said, go ye unto all the world and do what? If you know the answer, log on to KMI Lancaster, CA at gmail.com. Give your name and address, and if you or name is pulled, then you can win a $25 gift card. All right, now, if you've won already, you can't play again for six months. And if uh, one person in the family wins, then you can't play again for six months. I want to thank you for tuning in. God bless you, and God keep you every day.